What's going on YouTube? My name is Zach Sinstrom and welcome to the channel. So we got another install for you today. Something that should have happened a long time ago, but I was putting it off for whatever reason. I'm a procrastinator. Really sucks. So today we are getting the Mishimoto coolant overflow. The Mishimoto 180 thermostat. New radiator cap, might as well. And since we're doing everything, we're doing a full coolant flush with brand new coolant. So to do this, first we got to get this ugly thing out. Intake's going to come out to make it all easier. There is a breather right here on the oil pump. The thermostat is in here. What we're going to do is we're going to take that out for the flush. And under the car, I'll show you guys. Ugh. We have no light. Let's fix that. All right, so right here is the drain for, I'm not even showing you guys. So right here, is the drain for the radiator. Ugh. Let's see if I can get in here and show you guys. So this, I can't see anything. Okay, so this valve right here is what will open for this tube to drain the radiator. We're gonna be using this bucket to catch all of the old coolant. But first, let's go ahead and get some of the un or uninstall. We'll take this out and then we'll get ready to, well, I guess this doesn't even need to come out. First things first is that bucket needs to go under here to catch all of the coolant that we're gonna bleed out. And then we'll just go step by step process we're going to do a full flush, flush and clean. So we're going to drain everything. We're going to use a flush and clean with distilled water to clean out the system. Once we drain all of that, we will then do, I have full concentrate here, so it needs to be mixed 50% of this to 50% water or one to one, however you want to view it. This one gallon, need one gallon of water. The coolant capacity for the 6.4 for my 300 SRT8 is 14 quarts. That comes out to a little over three gallons. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. All right. So let's go ahead and uh, get started. All right. So let's go ahead and see if we can get this draining. Alright guys, so this right here was the, we had to do this counterclockwise to get this to start draining. So we're going to let this drain. What I'm going to go do is pop the, we're going to pop this so that we get some more airflow. Oh yeah. All right. So this is 20 quarts. The car is supposed to be 14, so I should be completely fine with just this bucket. So here's a better view. 
we had to undo that. All I used was a pair of channel locks because it was way too tight or way too seized up for me to do with my hands. So now we wait. So while this is still draining, we can see that this oh ugly reservoir is going is empty. So we're gonna go ahead and start dismounting it and getting stuff out so that we can get this new pretty sexy thing right here on. Okay, this thing is really nice looking in here. Woo! So the only thing that holds the reservoir on are these two 10 milliliters. We have one here, one here. We have one line here, and then we have a line down here that I don't have a light. It's the fill line, this is the return line. Now that that's in, it is solid. We are going to take this thermostat out, which will be taking this clamp off and taking these off, which are, they look bigger than 10. It might be a 12 or 13. Yep, bigger than a 10. All right, so it is a 13. We're gonna go ahead and get this off and finish draining the system because that should not be the full system. Although we probably have coolant still in the heater core, we'll go ahead and get all this drained. All right, so we have the factory thermostat out, which I know it doesn't say on here. I wanna say it's 203 or 208. I would have to relook it up, I don't know. So we have that off. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna reconnect this so that we have no thermostat, which there is also gonna be no gasket in there, but it won't have any pressure. But we're gonna do that for the flush so that we don't have, we have free flow, we don't have anything stopping the coolant from circulating through the motor, through the radiator, through the heater core while we do this flush. Okay, now that we have the thermostat out, this is bolted back together, the reservoir is in, all the lines are connected, we went ahead and, I don't have the light, we went ahead and closed off this valve. So, we went ahead and closed this valve back off so that nothing's draining, so that now we can put fluid in and repeat the process. So now we're adding the distilled water. This is the first gallon, which is four quarts. We're gonna use three of these gallons and the two super flushes that I have. So there's one gallon. Now we're gonna run these through. Well, since there is no thermostat in here, there is no gasket, there is no seal. So it is leaking. So we will let that leak. Trial and error, apparently. Some cars you can do that and take the thermostat out so you have free flow. Clearly you can't with this. So we will put, a, we will put the new thermostat in and restart. All right, now that we got the thermostat in, we're going to use the flush. So these directions state, with engine off and cool, drain radiator, pour contents into the radiator, flush system larger than, larger than 12 quarts, two bottles, heavy duty, we'll skip. For 10 minutes, run with heater on high, reaching operating temperature. Once cool, drain, refill with water, 10 minutes, heater high. Oh, read that again. Once cool, drain radiator, and fill with coolant. Okay, so we have the one gallon, and we have, this one's not open yet. 
But as you can see, there is, nah, it's hard to see. Well, the reservoir is about full. So what we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to get this to get past that thermostat and get circulating through the system. So after doing a little research, we have not done anything real quick. That level is still the same. What we're gonna do is we're gonna open up this bleed port. What we'll do is it'll release the air from the system, which is on the back side of this thermostat. So without actually having to run the engine and get this thermostat to temperature and open, we'll open this bleed port. We'll keep filling up until we get fluid come out of here. That should relieve most, if not all of the air from the system. And then we will finish with the flush, run it for 10 minutes, get the engine to temperature, get all the cleaner flush through the system with the heater on, try to get all the heater core element cleaned and flushed out, and then drain all this out, and then we'll put the coolant in. Okay, so on the 6.4 Hemis, this recessed Allen head is a quarter inch Allen head. So we're gonna take this out. So as we take this out, I'm going to see if this level drops any. So. And you can hear it and all right we started leaking and that level went down quite a bit so we'll go ahead and snug that back up we'll top this back off and we'll go from there so we've now emptied both bottles you can see the level is back where it was. We, as you just saw, we just released all the air from the system. We have one and a half gallons, which we should have. This system requires a lot more than that, but we have to think more coolant. We didn't get everything drained because all the heater core is still full. So with this tied again, we're gonna start the car. We're going to get the heater going. We're gonna keep an eye on the level and then we will get going well before we start the car let's let's get this intake back on glad I uh, thought about that so we're watching the cooling level we're watching the coolant tap Everything is on high heater, I'm trying to get this heater core to circulate and flush out. So we're going to keep a watch and make sure that this doesn't spike. Craig's home. Hi Craig. Good to go. So as you can see, the coolant in the reservoir is red again, orange, whatever color you want to say that is, which means the heater core got circulated through, so the cleaner worked. We got it past 180, so the thermostat opened, made sure that the whole system got ran through, heater was on the entire time on full blast. So now we're going to let this cool off some because this reservoir, ah, damn it, that's hot. It gets hot. There should be a caution sticker on it. Oh, that's why that hurts so bad. I touched it where I have a cut. Oh, that didn't feel good. Anywho, we're going to, I can't believe I just did that on video. All right, so now we need to drain this out. We're gonna let it cool out and we'll drain it. We gotta get rid of this old stuff. And we'll put the coolant in and we'll be done with the radiator flush. 
So the coolant's still pretty hot. We're gonna go ahead, uh, we emptied out, or we put what we had drained originally into these empty distilled water bottles. Now I'm gonna go ahead and open this valve and uh, get started draining this again. All right, so the reservoir is basically empty. And we are no longer, oh well, we got a little, we got a little drip going. But the tank is basically, tank, whatever, this thing is about the same as it was. I'm about to close that valve off and then we will be filling this thing up with coolant. And that will be it for the flush and Mishimoto Reservoir install and I have to admit I got to change this intake because It's covering too much of my reservoir and I really like my reservoir <laughs> Stupid can in So we are using the orange formula that Mopar recommends and this is full concentrate So we have to dilute this one gallon with one gallon of distilled so we're gonna pour this first one gallon in then this, then on the second gallon, we'll kind of go back and forth until the radiator is full. So I'm actually kind of surprised this coolant is clear. I'm kind of, I don't know, whatever. It's what was recommended. That is it guys, we did a full 50-50 mix. The reservoir was full. We now have the cap, we're gonna get it to operating temperature. We still have the heater on full blast. We'll let this get up to operating temperature. So it is the next morning, the coolant is not hot. So the level is, the level is still good. So what I'll do is I'll check this periodically throughout the week and make sure that, I'll put that on the sink when I'm on the, I will check that periodically through the week and make sure that that does not drop below and we'll just add some if there's any other air in the system but i think we're good guys all right guys i hope you enjoyed this video i hope you found it informative not only did we get the mishimoto aluminum overflow reservoir in we got the 180 thermostat in which is a huge plus for this car getting it to run at lower temperatures um, we got all of the new coolant in. I've got extra coolant just in case. We checked the level, everything looks good. I will check it periodically throughout the week and make sure that everything is good and we don't run low. Last thing we want is the car to overheat. So if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already. Hit that bell for notifications if you do.